Hi, my name is Sunny Solanki and you are tuned to Coders Column. In today's video, I will explain how to build an ML web app using Python library Gradio. Gradio is one of the most used libraries by data scientists nowadays to create AI and ML web apps. Now for our app, we will be solving a simple classification task. Specifically, we will be training a random forest classifier on wine data set available from scikit-learn. After training the model, we will save it and use it in our app to make predictions. The app will have various widgets through which user can provide input and submit for prediction. Once user submit for predictions, the app will use trained model to make prediction and display results on screen. Alright, so that was a small introduction. Now, first of all, let me show you the app that we are going to create before we go on to coding part. So as you can see on my screen, I have a sample image open of how the app will look like. So on the left side, as you can see, I have various uh, sliders. So these are list of widgets that let us select a value of ingredients. So for all widgets, uh, for all ingredient, there is a widget. And after selecting various values for this ingredient, we can click on this predict button. And then on the right side, we will be displayed the probability of the class. So this wine data set uh, is a classification data set and it uh, generates to three, three different classes of wine. So class zero, class one and class two. So the first label is the probabilities of uh, each of this uh, class. So over here 64% is the probability of class zero, 26% for class two and 10% for class one. And below that we have an explanation created for this prediction. So how each uh, individual feature contributed to this prediction, whether they contributed positively or negatively. So this chart displays that. All right. So that's a small app that we are going to create in this tutorial. Now, before we go on with the creation of our dashboard, we first of all need to train our model and save it. And that part of the coding is done in Jupyter Notebook. So, all right. So first of all, let me take you to Jupyter Notebook and explain that code. So as you can see on my screen, now I have a Jupyter Notebook open where I have code to train the model and save it. So code is uh, quite simple. And over here, as you can see, I have explained various uh, dependencies that we will be needing in our tutorial. Gradio for creating dashboard, scikit-learn for uh, data sets and ML models, Panda for representing data set as data frame, and Joblib will be used to save and load the model, and Live will be used to interpret the prediction made by our model. Right. So let's go ahead with this code. So the first section over here is load data set. So this section simply loads a wine data set and save it as a Panda's data frame. So as you can see, the data set has uh, information about various ingredients used in creation of three different type of wine. So wine type is uh, three, class zero, class one and class two. And all these ingredients are continuous columns. So yeah, there is no categorical column in our uh, data set. So after loading our data set, what we have done over here is we have divided it into train and test set using uh, Trained test split function available from a scikit learn. So we have kept 80% for training and remaining 20% for test data set. Now in the next section, we have trained a simple random forest classifier with default parameters. And yeah, after training in this section, we are making prediction of the trained model predictions using the trained model on test data set. So why test rates is that prediction on test data set. And in the fourth section, we are evaluating various ML metrics. So first of all, we are displaying test accuracy. Then we have also calculated confusion metrics and classification reports. So as you can see, we have 0.97, so around 97% accuracy for our test data set. So this is a good accuracy. And as we can see, the resulting classification reports look good as well. So I, so we can conclude that our model is doing good and we can use it to make predictions. Now in the next section, I have simply 
loading and saving the model so first of all i imported from joblib dump function now this dump function can be used to save our model to disk so over here i have saved it to a file name rfclassif.model and then in the next cell over here i have loaded that model again and i have loaded it as a rf classif 2 and to check whether that uh, this loaded function uh, that is loaded model is working fine i have evaluated various uh, metrics again so again made a prediction on test data set and evaluated the metrics so these results are same as our previous result so we can say that model load is working fine right so that's a persistent so we'll be using this model in our dashboard app to make prediction all right now this is the last section of uh, this notebook so over here i have explained how you can interpret the predictions made by our model so this will help us understand like how each feature contributed to prediction whether it contributed positively or negatively and for that we will use this uh, python library named lime so lime implements a famous algorithm named lime which is local interpretable model agnostic explanations so from that i have imported lime tabular as you can see and first of all i have created an explainer object lime tabular explainer in order to create object i have provided it our train data set mode is set to classification and then list of class names and list of future names are for so this is explainer object now we can use this explainer object to explain any instance prediction made by our model on any instance so i will call this method explain instance on explainer and it will return me an explanation object so in order to create explanation object i will provide this method individual data sample so in our case i am providing it the zeroth sample from our test data set and then i need to provide it function which will return the probabilities for each class so this function will return three probabilities probabilities for class 0 class 1 and class 2 and then number of futures so it's uh, all the futures of our data set and top labels so i am set it over here as three because we have three class but if you have like 50, 40 50 classes and you want to see like which are the top three classes then you can specify it using top labels so after creating explanation object i can call this uh, method as pyplot figure on it and provide it which label i want to explain so in our case for uh, zero sample the actual prediction uh, the actual label of that uh, class is class one so i have asked it to explain label one over here and as you can see it uh, created a matplotlib figure object which i have saved in this variable yeah and this is the figure which says like uh, color intensity was less than 3.26 which contributed positively towards prediction proline was less than or equal to 500 contributed positively magnesium was in the range 96 to 107 and it contributed negatively so if we increase magnesium above 107 then it might contribute positively towards this prediction all right so that's it now let's uh, move to jupyter notebook uh, now let's move to the editor not jupyter notebook and get started with coding of our uh, dashboard all right so here we are in my id so i will be using visual studio code editor for coding my dashboard you are free to use any other editor which you feel comfortable working with so i have saved our dashboard in this file name gradio ml dashboard.py and i have saved it in this folder gradio ml dashboard on my pc right so as you can see in this file i have some amount of code already present in this uh, file so this is the code which is taken from the jupyter notebook which i have explained you so the code is to load the data set and made prediction so let me quickly explain you the code so first of all i have imported gradio as cr then there are a few imports related to joblib pandas numpy matplotlib and scikit-learn and I have also imported lime tabular from lime. Yeah. The next I have declared a function named load dataset. So this function simply loads our wine dataset. It returns uh, two values wine. So this wine bunch 
uh, the bunch object of wine which is available from scikit-learn and then wine df data frame in the next line i have loaded our model rf classif so i have used load function available from joblib to load our model rf classif dot model which we saved after training from jupyter notebook next i have loaded our wine data set after loading the data set i have divided it into train and test set and this is specifically needed to load the data set to create this explainer object otherwise you won't need the, you won't need this part of the code all right so that's the explainer object next i have declared a function predict so this predict function takes the, all the ingredients one by one as input and it returns two things the prediction and the interpretation figure so first of all it takes all the sliders so all the ingredients and then it calls predict proba function on our classifier so this spreads will have probability for all the three class and over here i am creating a dictionary over here so the dictionary will have uh, three keys and three values so three keys are class 0 class 1 and class 2 and values will be probability for each of those classes next over here i am making prediction so this will be actual prediction class 0 1 and 2 and then i am explaining this uh, prediction using the explainer instance that we created and then i am creating an pyplot figure of that explanation i am returning so this function returns two things one is dictionary of uh, probabilities and second is interpretation figure so we'll be using this two and display it in our dashboard all right so let's uh, go ahead with the coding of dashboard now with uh, radio first of all we need to create a container so that we can do using gr dot blocks function and we can use this uh, blocks function as a as a context manager so i will say as demo now whatever i plot or write that will go inside this block so this block is like uh, this block container is like you can consider it as a whole screen of the tab in which you have opened your web app so now that you have created that uh, container you can call different methods to add different things like widgets and so on so first of all i will add a simple markdown so the markdown i will use to add title to our dashboard or app so i will say wine type prediction and this will add h1 html h1 title to our dashboard now using markdown so if you don't know markdown is a small language that let us add uh, formatted text and if you have a background with uh, jupyter notebook then you might be already aware of what is markdown next what we will do is that uh, we need to create a row object so gr dot row so this will be another container inside our original container but with this container uh, we can divide the horizontal space so first of all i will say width and we can use this container row container as the context manager as well now after adding this row container I will divide our horizontal space into two columns. So let me open this uh, image again. So as you can see, this will be considered, this whole thing will be considered as one row. And these are two columns. So in the first column, I have various sliders and this button. And in the second column, I have this label and this chart. All right. So let's go ahead and first of all, create a column for our sliders so over here i can use gr dot column so that will create a first column in which sliders will be displayed so i will add a simple title in that uh, column saying select ingredients next i need to create all the ingredients so I will create a sliders variable. And over here, I will write a for loop. So for ingredient in wine dot 
feature names so for each ingredient i will create a slider object and i will give it label to ingredient so name of the ingredient and then i need to give minimum and maximum value for that ingredient so minimum i will set to wine df so i will use wine df wine df of that ingredient and minimum min so wine df over here and then i will set maximum and that will be wine df of ingredient dot max so what this single line will do it will create a list of sliders for each ingredient for each ingredient it will create a single slider and save those sliders into this uh, sliders variable all right so now that we have created a slider let's create a button let's add a button for making prediction so i will say create a button and for that there is a function name button over here we can give label that predict so now we are done with the first column where we add various uh, sliders and button let's add one more column which is the column which will be displayed in the right side now in this column we will be doing two things uh, we will be displaying the bar chart for uh, predictions and then the bar chart for interpretation so in order to do that we need to create uh, first of all gr dot label so this uh, label function accepts the uh, value which can be string or dict so if i give it string it will be displayed that uh, as it is but in our case we are giving it a dictionary as i explained over here and that dictionary will have uh, probabilities of all the classes so what this label will do it will convert that dictionary into a bar chart and it will display those probabilities in descending order so let me just save it separate label so this will be that probabilities display and next i need to create plot placeholder so in over here the plot will be displayed so that i will do gl dot plot function so what this will do this plot function can accept different kinds of figure like uh, matplotlib figure alter figure plotly figure bokeh figure and so on so in our case we will set over here the matplotlib figure that we create the interpretation figure now that we have declared the sliders and buttons and this placeholders for uh, charts what we need to do we need to link this spread button with this function that uh, whenever spread button is clicked call this function which will return these two outputs put the first output in case of spread label and put interpretation figure in place of play plot placeholder so that we can do using click function or click method available from our button object and that uh, method accepts uh, first argument is a function which is a prediction in our case so this predict function next is inputs so what are inputs to this method so this is list so in our case I, we have a list of sliders available over here so input is this sliders and next is outputs so output is the, where we want to direct the output of this function so i want to direct the first output to this spread label and i want to direct the second output to this plot placeholder so dictionary will be directed to label and interpretation figure will be directed to plot placeholder all right so that's it last thing we need to do is we need to add this line demo dot launch and we are done with the coding of our dashboard so let's test it now in order to test it as you can see i have a terminal open below and i am already in this directory gradio ml dashboard where i have kept this file gradio ml dashboard.py now in order to run gradio dashboard you can simply execute it as a python file 
or you can execute it with the gradio command as well so the difference is that with uh, if you launch it as a python script then if you make any change to this file that won't be reflected over there but if you execute with the gradio command then if you make any change to this file the dashboard will be updated as well so in our case i will use gradio right so let's run it now this will start the server and once the server is started we will open the app okay so the server is started at this location http this so let me copy this and let me go to browser yeah so let's launch it all right so as you can see we have all the sliders over here for each ingredients and on the right side we don't have anything so let's uh, select various values for this uh, sliders now after selecting these values i can simply call predict all right so as you can see on the right side we have a simple bar chart which shows the probability of each class and it has predicted class 2 with probability of 48 percent class 0 is 35 percent and class 1 is 17 percent and below that i have a chart which shows like how much each feature contributed so in our case as you can see this uh, feature diluted wine sales contributed negatively so let's try to increase it further and see how it's impacting so it's contributing again negatively so i will decrease the value yeah now as you can see the probability of class 2 has increased and that uh, ingredient is now contributing positively so let's change the value for hue as well so let me decrease the values for hue and yeah then now the model is even more confident that this is class 2 same we can do for pro line yeah now it's uh, sure with the pro line and let's change this pro anthocyanins as well all right so now as you can see now with this setting the class 2 has 97 percent probability of being class 2 the model is very confident now now you can change these values to different values and see how it's affecting the prediction yeah so now the class 2 has less probability so let's decrease some of the values further and see yeah now as you can see now it's predicting class 1 so we can change color intensity which is uh, contributing negatively so let me increase all right it's still contributing negatively. so let's decrease color intensity yeah and now color intensity is uh, contributing positively so yeah that's it uh, for uh, this tutorial uh, we are done with the creation of our app and you can go ahead and play uh, implement this app and play along with it so yeah that's it now if you are looking to create more such uh, web apps using python then i would recommend that you visit our channels playlist so we have uh, various playlists to create uh, different kinds of dashboard and web apps so we have dashboards for nlp machine learning we have various dashboards for streamlets and so on so feel free to explore our playlist if you want to create more such ai and ml web apps so yeah that's it for this tutorial if you liked our video and you feel that you learned something new today then give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and see you next time